Hey guys, so I am likely to receive a lifetime ban from Magic the Gathering. And it, first of all, I'll be okay. It's not going to affect the channel. They don't own YouTube. I don't even play FNM anyways. Because my local game store, DNA Comics, has not had FNM for many months because not enough people want to go play. So let's go ahead and talk about this email. I'm going to read the important parts. Hello, Tony Gore, DCI. I did not know that I had two DCI numbers. That 13 DCI number, if I'm correct, that's a very, very low DCI number. Somebody, I, I'm guessing what happened was I had that number and then I lost it because it was so old and then I picked up another number. I'm an investigator at Wizards of the Coast. You think you would be kind of busy with the predators and the judge program, but nope. Um, he has plenty of time to investigate me and not investigate that sexual predators, right? I'm writing to you because we, we received allegations that you violated Wizards Code of Conduct. So I looked at the Code of Conduct. It's pretty long. Essentially, the part that I'm pretty sure that they're going to hit me on is you said something on social media that we didn't like. So even if joining a Facebook group like Magic for Bad could get you banned, then yes, my YouTube video should get me banned if that is the standard. I'm not going to argue with that. I do find it arbitrary that some people like Alex, who is a cheater and who says a lot of really ridiculous stuff online, is allowed to play Magic at the highest level. And even to the point that Ifro, who pretty much bullies people into conceding, he's allowed to continue to play and win Magic the Gathering tournaments. I don't know. I figured I would be banned eventually, but not really for this. I would have assumed that it was releasing the emails that they sent me about the counterfeits, which I still have. And if I release them, you are going to see something that um, is quite surprising. They encouraged counterfeits. Or at the very least, they knew that it would help them with the reprints. Okay, back to this email. Uh, so we received several complaints that your alleged statements and actions on social media violate the Wizards Code of Conduct, specifically several videos posted on YouTube during the month of January 2018. Do they list the videos? No. Could they possibly be more vague? No. January 2018 was when I was talking about judges who were sexual predators. I also talked about Jacob, aka Soy Boy. And what else did I talk about? Efro was bullying people back then, I guess. I don't know. A lot of interesting topics were talked about in January, which is no different from any other month. Maybe Alex. I don't know if Alex videos were this month or last month. Regardless, I'm being banned for life, pretty much over my social media posts, in particular, my YouTube videos, an unknown amount of YouTube videos. So when they say several videos, you pretty much read this as, okay, I'm getting banned for life. Wizard is currently investigating these claims and will like you to give you the opportunity to provide a statement or additional blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I am going to fight this. And I am going to present a legal argument. Uh, my legal argument is very strong. I do have to find some case law to support it and probably do a brief because this is kind of interesting for me at least is can people, public companies, in this case, I have very strong, I'm a strong plaintiff here because I'm a customer and customers have a lot of protections that employee, employees have a lot of protections, but so do customers and their protections differ. So I'm not an employee of Wizards of Coast. Um, I'm not a WPN store because honestly, you can buy booster boxes from Dave and Adams cheaper than you could from Wizards of Coast directly to, and sports and more and things of that nature. And 
when you talk about a legal case, there has to be damages. My damages is my entire collection. So if I wanted to bring up a case, that would be what I would be suing. That would be the amount I'm suing for, which is, as you can probably guess, a large amount because it would be, hey, I can no longer, I bought these cards with the expe expectation that I could play FNMs and Pro Tours, and now I, I cannot. You took that away from me. So I should get reimbursed for these cards. That would be, I have to make the argument a little bit stronger, but that would be the damage part. That would be what I want in damages is I want them to buy my entire collection, which they're not going to have fun buying. I can tell you that much. And the other part, luckily a lot of the bulk reserve list went up in price. So my collection is actually kind of inflated right now. The other part I wanted to talk about is the argument that a company, a publicly held company with shareholders could, in, could use private activity or a private individual who's posting YouTube videos, which they, I'm glad that they mentioned YouTube here because that kind of drags in YouTube into this. They previously had mentioned Facebook for the Facebook group Magic for Bad, but now they're bringing YouTube. So they're saying any social media, and for MTG headquarters, I believe they used Twitter as the reason they were banning him for life. So any social media under this vague policy. So if you read this policy, it is just very abstract. And if you, for instance, if you are a Donald Trump supporter and they don't like what you said, they can ban you under that policy because there's a lot of loopholes and they can do selective enforcement. Now, they might not know this because I'm assuming that their legal team is hasn't read the code of conduct because it is the code of conduct is too vague to be enforceable. And the reason that's important is they are using selective enforcement, which is discrimination. Now, I took a First Amendment class in law school. I took a constitution class with a professor, a very famous professor, constitution professor. It was a one-on-one -on -one paper, and the class was about the Supreme Court, the scrutinies, strict scrutiny and all of the discrimination, essentially. So when the Supreme Court is deciding how to determine a case, they have to do the scrutinies, right? And discrimination, and there's, there's a few grounds I can hit them for discrimination on. But that would be kind of my argument is they created this policy and they're using it to ban people who are right-leaning and who have expressed that opinion on social media. They are not targeting left-leaning individuals. And that is what I would say. So I have not looked into constitution law in some time, but now would be the time to do it. So strict scrutiny is the most stringent standard of judicial review. And I wrote a whole paper with a professor, again, a very famous constitution professor. My um, constitution law professor is probably one of the top five most famous. And he actually probably, if he was younger, he might have been a Supreme Court justice. Uh, and I also had, I had, my law school was very good for the Constitution, and that's only the classes I took. So there's free standards, uh, strict scrutiny, uh, rational basis review, and intermediate scrutiny. So the levels are dependent on what is actually being discriminated against. Here, you know, the problem is this is a policy, and the policy can be enforced for differently for different people. And if the policy is we can use your social media that you violate the terms of Wizard of the Coast, your statements and actions on social media, which we don't own, violates the terms of our code of conduct that we just created, which says if you're mean, we can ban you. There's no guidelines to determining, and they didn't tell me. If you read this email, it's super vague. 
There's not, you're mean to this person, you were mean to this person, this is what you said. I am going to fight this. And it would be make very interesting case law because to be quite honest, I own a marketing company and any PR is normally good PR. And this would be a groundbreaking, and we do some social media, we restructured so we do less of that, but we do some social media management. And this is a very good question. Uh, for most people, especially millennials, uh, my age, is if you post something on social media, can a publicly held, publicly traded company enforce a social media policy on you? Especially if you're a customer. My answer would be no. But again, I need to, so don't worry about the funding. We don't need to do a GoFundMe. This will be very interesting. I'm going to present everything on YouTube. And this will be a kind of our no, new legal section where I fight this and I make everything very public. I did write a response to them and I'm waiting for them to reply. My response really just asks them some basic questions. But I'm hoping they reply back. They may not after I'm publishing these videos. It is definitely very fascinating that they have time to do this. And you know what? I have time to do this. I think this would be very good PR for my social media division. It's a great question. I mean, it is a fantastic question. Can a publicly held company enforce social media policies on its customers? I don't know if there's case law on it, but I'll find out if there is not. I, I can... I view this, do you know how much, so I'm in ink. Do you know how much that article in ink would cost me to buy? I didn't buy it, but I got to be in it because it was an interesting statement I made. Uh, ink Magazine would cost $17,000 for that article that I currently have. Doing a case, is it worth ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 of my time to write motions, briefs and stuff? Yeah, it is. And I want to test it out. I think it would be compelling and I would document everything on this YouTube channel. So stay subscribed because it's going to get some spicy. My next video is going to be my mad video. This video is more of a logical video. Anyway, bye guys.